Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome to the front line of a Thursday night panel show. Joined tonight with by Janice Leamond Creaky, <laughs> Suzette Lauer, and Ken Biscom. I get points again, all in your Yeah. <laughs> Today we're dealing with the not so funny topic, white collar crime. The last couple of weeks, if not for the past 55 years, the issue of white collar corruption and outright theft from the nation's treasury dominates the national conversation. So where are we? We are stuck at a place, the third richest nation in the Western Hemisphere, broke, dead broke, minutes away from an IMF intervention, if call members is to believe, be believed, mm -hmm. but we are now in a conversation where we would like to discuss how do you stop white collar crime? if anything could be done to recover funds stolen over the years. So that One of the aspects of white collar crime I think we need to focus on is party financing. I think the financiers that have been contributing to political parties over the years are basically the cause of government corruption in today's politics. I think that's an issue we need to address, even though we have had campaign financing reform laws put well, enacted, nothing has been really put out in the public space to determine how is it going to be implemented. And I think that's an issue that we need to look at because that takes, once it's addressed, a lot of corruption within government offices and, and ministers and so forth. Sorry, that's one of the aspects of white collar addressed. I think a lot of people, ordinary citizens like myself, are very concerned about parties that are not in government that are influencing the decisions of government. I also think that we need to look at ministers that have. So you need some time there? I got it. <laughs> okay. I have to disrobe it. This is the technology. <laughs> it eludes me sometimes. Yes. Well. I apologize. Continue. <laughs> So outside of Philip being a toddler this evening, we will try to focus on why we're here. Now, a lot of people are very concerned that you have people outside of government making governmental decisions. And if we have a particular person and that person has transferred the, the authority to someone else who is not supposed to be making a decision for our country, that is a very troubling issue that we need to address. Uh, white collar crime in terms of, of funding criminal activity, that's also another issue we need to look at, as well as money laundering. Uh, many of the businesses that we see operating in Trinidad are operating questionably, and there are no laws being implemented to deal with that. And even if there are laws that I'm not aware of, or perhaps are being worked on as we speak, we cannot depend on the government to, to do anything with regards to implementing those because it appears to me as though they have no interest, no financial interest or invested interest in seeing that those businesses are being brought before the court. Indeed. And, well, the advent of things like the Financial Intelligence Unit, we get information through the media that calls names and says numbers and nothing else follows from that. And that's one of the points we're going to discuss. How come over the course of 55 years, a rogues gallery of virtual thieves have been able to operate in the bright glare of public scrutiny without so much of a consequence. Ken? Yes. Uh, so the viewers are there, what constitutes white collar crime? Basically, white collar crime is committed by people who are well respected in the higher levels of the social strata. And white collar crime, for example, is uh, fraud, embezzlement, bribe. Money laundering, as you heard uh, Suzette just said, uh, insider trading. All those things you have, come up, you have heard at one point, and it seems that no one is uh, being affected by it. Or it's, it's not a victimless crime to start with. Somebody is being affected, and it's the general public. Basically, it's a crime that is committed without, without violence. So it tends to seem like it's, it's, it's not happening, but it's real, and it's damaging our country. Without violence. Someone said that you could walk around with all of your money and risk getting robbed in the street, or you could put it in the bank and get robbed in air conditioned comfort. Janice? I think one of the problems as we have, and I think it's been echoed over and over again, is that we do not seem to have the, the will 
to enforce the necessary laws. Now, there are the laws, but it's just not being enforced. And I think that the, the, the various agencies that, are, that have the responsibility for enforcing are just, is either they don't have the funds, or they don't have the staff, or they're just not able to ensure that there is enforcement. We have had several stories within the last couple of weeks where you've actually seen white collar crime at work. And we need to do something about this. I mean, why isn't the government doing something? Now, we, someone will say, well, why does we always have to wait on the government? But we can't, the citizens, do anything about it. It has to be the government. And not only that, when you hear of the, um, information being passed to the police or to these office, nothing comes out of it. Why? Indeed. And that is a question and that, that takes us exactly where this conversation should start. Because, and I put it to the entire panel, how could this country have this much law enforcement and the judiciary not be introspective enough to ask itself, how come not one? How could, how could the Director of Public Prosecution's Office for 55 years, not one, mm -hmm. ever, how could we have a Commissioner of Police, a Trinidad Tobago Police Service, for 55 years plus, not one, ever, brought to justice, successfully prosecuted? We've had some arrests. The most notorious were, were the, um, the airport. Nine became 13, and then nine became 15. <laughs> Cost yes. the country a couple hundred million dollars in investigation and prosecution. Not one person has had to lose their ill-gotten gains except through maybe lawyer fees. But how is it possible that we could have a country where that much money could be stolen? I mean, the current prime minister told the nation that in 2009, when he was a member of the Patrick Manning government. He said that Patrick Manning's government was 10 times more corrupt. And he said this in the parliament in Hansard. He said that Patrick Manning's cabinet was 10 times more corrupt than the UNC that was rumored, alleged to have stolen over a billion dollars in one project, the Piaco Airport Redevelopment Project alone. Mm -hmm. What? is obscene saying that statement is that the same King Lowley went on to build a government with many of the same characters in his cabinet. So where are we going? Is it musical chairs? Who dares wins? Now the problem with that uh, is that when the general population, especially the younger people of Trinidad and Tobago, whom, as a side note, are the ones that we are supposed to be nurturing because they are going to be the leaders of Trinidad and Tobago, when they witness white color crime taking place in Trinidad and Tobago and there is no accountability, no one is being held accountable for those crimes, they are demotivated. They do not think that the system works. They have no energy, no motivation to try to fight for change because they think that they're fighting against brick walls where they are not going to be able to break through and make a difference. We need to change that. We need to let the people of this country, especially our young people, know that we have concerned citizens that are fighting for them to be able to get justice in this country. Well, I don't want to put this on the table because the Progressive Empowerment Party has strong anti-corruption policies. From advocating for the abolishing of the special purpose companies, shut down completely, the Sport, TT, Unicot, EMBD, EFCL, uh, because those companies, what they effectively do is enrun the tenders process and the tender system. Um, we advocate for repurposing the National Insurance Board back to its remit, shut down National Insurance Property Development Company, because that too seems to be engaging in some sketchy business. The most notorious in my lifetime has been the disco financing of Siam Nightclub and Apsara and Tam Naktai around the Savannah, where, they, where, where the state through the National Insurance Board, bought the restaurants and the building for 37 million, in, injected another 4 million to renovate it for the owners, rented it back to them for a soft loan and give them the full opportunity to buy it back at any time interest free. Now that, the only thing that I have heard in my time that is more obscene than that was the Mill Shelf deal in Tobago that you may know something about. Well, 
It was a very hot issue, I remember, how the land was initially purchased, who bought it, and how the deal was arranged in such a way that the THA uh, was a very tangled web. Interesting. Which smelled not good. What I was told was that the people who owned the land, sold the land to the THA, the THA bought it from them for an increased price, mm -hmm. then rented it back to them for a peppercorn rent, mm -hmm. and then agreed to rent a building on that land from them and gave them the money to build the building. Yes, something like that. And again, with a, with a, that should be a with, study. With, with a, with, yes, with a. They, with should a be, they, should, they should be prosecuted for that. They should, they should be studied. This and, and all this was done within the party group, mind right you. Yeah? So it was, it was, it was appalling. Many Tobagonians were very outraged, and the government just did absolutely nothing. I think they went to trial. It came back, and it just sat there. It went as far as the trial. I think so. There was some. There was some. Uh, I think. Now you see, yes, this it, was, is it. it was it. I think it was. And that's it. the point because there's no way that nobody could turn. You can't True. raise an issue, and and now, and I read an article in the Economist, how third world nations, how how defamation laws are used to silence uh, public, the public from speaking out against issues and allegations of corruption in countries where the justice system is so lax that in Trinidad they make a joke that when you're stealing money, make sure to steal lawyer's fees. Yes. <laughs> steal the lawyer's fees inside. Yeah, because you're spending a lot of money on lawyers. They're the ones who really make the money, you know. You see, that's another issue too. The mm -hmm. judiciary system is so incompetent and inefficient that the time that it takes for prosecuting crimes that are related to white color crimes, really, I mean, it's unbelievable. So then you, on one side, whether or not you're able to, to commit a crime, if you get caught, the judiciary system does not allow for it to be an efficient process. So there also seems to be no accountability at that level. Mm -hmm. the, but, sad, the sad thing about, about what's happening is that many people have become so accustomed to it. It has become a way of life. It, yeah. can't, it can't be. And the Progressive Empowerment Party, we advocate for the decentralization of cabinet to the constituency. We want to create 41 semi-autonomous constituencies with their own funding to run their own development and maintenance. So that no longer would you have one centralized cabinet appointing one centralized contractor, as has been the case since the <coughs> NAR lost elections. We've had these super contractors with pretty much nothing when a government comes to power and when the government finally is the billionaire. And, 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 and not to segue into this, but the Express today is talking about the current government that had the worst things to say about a contractor came into power and fired that contractor from a project that they were on, has that contractor in court for that project and just awarded them a multi-hundred million dollar contract for another project. Mm -hmm. So. So what exactly is going on? What are the people to believe? The actual public, so jaded and cynical, when you tell them that we are going to enforce the law, they, they don't take that with a pinch of salt. They're not taking it at all. Because even if it reaches the level of the judiciary, nothing is being done. It is dragged out in court. There seems to be no sense of justice and no sense of closure for the people. So it's, it's almost as though we have this feeling that we can't fight them. So we just give up and we see how everything turns out, how it plays out. And well, not just that, but just the government themselves are perpetrating the, the crime. So again, as Susanna is saying, the people are not going to take, on, take it on because if the government is perpetrating the crime, then where is going to, who's going to bring, them, bring the, uh, the perpetrators to, 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 um, to court? Or, you know, do something about it. We discussed campaign finance reform. Campaign That's finance right. reform has been part of a suite of, of mm -hmm. amendments and constitutional reforms that we've been discussing since Bastille Pandé left office. And it's not happening. And the reason it's not happening is because we do not have an Elections and Boundaries Commission serious about right-sizing how elections are done. So you can drown just about any elections in questionable money. And that money has to get paid back. How is it paid back? To, to government contracts. We've proposed, we've proposed that the EBC pursue their own document where they've proposed a hundred thousand dollar cap per spend per constituency on an election. So that you cannot spend one dollar more than a hundred thousand dollars on the constituency for the election or risk having your candidate disqualified. But that 
like the maritime security wall, like the free, like, like the, um, it's not, it's not the free trade act, it's the fair trade act. We've had, we've had laws. The children's authority languished for 12 years. Dangerous dogs was redone three times, 15 years. We have laws upon laws. People send me information every single day. There's a law that would have dealt with this oil spill in Chagaramas since 2004. That law was debated in Parliament. Nothing. We are making fools of the public because the government and the opposition meet in the Parliament what is referred to, what is known as the House of Representatives and only seem to be representing themselves as special interests. That's a very, very sad reality to because no, to me, the entire population is completely numbed. Yes. No one feels any sense of justice, especially the people mm -hmm. who are at the lower end, who don't have all the means that uh, those who are stealing, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, they're flaunting the wealth. You see it, there's no accountability. There's no looking into someone's salary compared to what it is their lifestyle is. Right. I mean, it's so blatant. We're supposed to have declaration of your wealth or the integrity explanation. Commission. Integrity the integrity commission. commission got one of the smallest allocations in its budget, and that is ridiculous because that's the integrity it commission. It is not ridiculous, job. actually. It's intentional. But, but, but the point I'm trying to make is it is that the integrity commission's job. The current chairman of the integrity commission has said that if you do not give the integrity commission powers of search, seizure, and arrest, they play the okay. food. Because they've sent a list, and I am aware it's in the public space the director of public prosecution of members who hold high public office that are in breach of the integrity in public life and action is being taken. Yes. Who calls these public office holders to account? Before we move forward, just some quick housekeeping. We will be taking calls tonight on 6822110. You should know that number by now. Mm -hmm. And we will tell you shortly when we will be taking calls. Do not have a call before then. Also, tonight, the PRO of the Progressive Empowerment Party, Tony Defoe, he will be joining us halfway through the show because as of next week, Thursday, Tony will be a regular on this frontline show as other shows are being um, unveiled under the rubric of Pep Media run by our own Ken Biscott. But back on point, and let's bring it back to here. If the, if the media and the editorial in the media could be asked here about these things are not adding up. No one has clean hands. The government nor the opposition. The public is crying out for blood. They want to fire the government. They have no interest in the opposition. We are at a very dangerous place in our development. If we can't convince people to move away from those two parties, I think society could fracture. I think the country as a whole could be devastated because it is clear that the politicians we have in power and the politicians pass they do not have the country's interests at heart. The infrastructural works and the development plans that they have in place seem to somehow benefit a chosen few in the country and it's not trickling down to the people on the ground. Poverty is increasing, crime is increasing, and now we have to contend with white color crime, which is something that we should, we should be able to contain in a country as small as Trinidad and Tobago. So something as basic as, as uh, the Tobago Sea Bridge, for example, that you know, yes. have some Tobago. We had the Blue Food Festival in Tobago just this last Sunday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. and that's the, the weekend that the ferry boat seems to have can't function. Broke down, stranding, stranding a lot of people who mm -hmm. were trying to get to Tobago. So now the hoteliers, people who own guest houses, lost out on that. You saw the, the report on CNC3 where they got this information about the Terrajet. Mm -hmm. The Terrajet was supposed to be the front line to replace the Superfast Galatia up to June mm -hmm. this year. and. In three weeks, that was abandoned, and we learned of Bridgemont Services, who a week before didn't exist, and they got the contract to provide two boats mm. for twice the price of what we were getting the Terrajet for, that could carry twice the amount of vehicles and, and passengers. It, and, and of course, it's a younger vehicle too, compared vessel, sorry, yes, compared yes. to the one that they are. Uh, no, because they say the Cobo Star or the Ocean Flower too is one of, is, is one of the boats responsible for the oil spill that just took place in Chagaramas. Today, we got a video from a guy named Stephen Bush, thank you Stephen, um, that, that, that wants to put responsibility on a vessel anchored in Chagaramas called the Bywater Liberty. Minister Franklin Khan, I have tagged you on social media. You said you don't know who, you don't know where, you very almost didn't know what, but you knew why. I didn't understand how that was possible, <laughs> unless you're a seaman. 
But now you're tagged in a thread with a video of the Buy Water Liberty. And what I was told after releasing that video is that the Ocean Flower 2 is tied up behind it. And that it looks like they're trying to throw the Buy Water Liberty under the bus <laughs> to save bridge bonds and this Ocean Flower 2. I believe this Bridgman's issue is going to bring this government down. And let me just add to this date, we do not know who the shareholders of this company is still. Even though I think that there is information out in social media where it's a group of party financiers for the PNM that own this company, we have no proof, we have no evidence to state that is the case. But to date, we've received no information or no confirmation as to who the real owners are of Bridgman Services Group. Why would Terragent be negotiating with Minister Rohan Sinha, Minister of Transport, through his chemical company in, in Hong, Hong Kong. Kong? Why would that be in Hong Kong. how the country tenders for the sewage? That, that, that is so suspect. There is a Port Authority Board of Trinidad and Tobago whose job it is to handle all of this. The ministers. The minister is supposed to be arm's length from these decisions, yet Terrajet is emailing him direct. What exactly was going on here? And, and, and I really don't know. No, I think you might be pegging Mr. Sinanan wrongfully because he recuses himself from those processes. I don't know how it's possible to do that if you're involved in the communication process. Well, one, one can't help but ask the question, where is the police in this? There is so much uh, accusations, there is so much smoke, let's say, that there is wrongdoing taking place. <clears throat> and the police is absolutely absent. They're not looking you know, at it's right. the same reason why Keith Rowley made that phone call to the owner of AB Oil and Gas. And it's not because it's his friend. I am, I, I, I am looking at this from a, from a personal point of view. If that was my friend and I knew that I was the Prime Minister of the country, I would let the public know, this is my friend. Disclosure. Tread lightly, tread lightly because this is my friend. And that is what I think he was trying to get out in the media. So you are trying to pervert the course of justice. Oh, you mean by putting the police on notice? That's right. So the police, I mean, the truth is you're dealing with, with, with high level politicians. Who really is going to risk their life or their job no, for the purpose of getting it done? Let me tell you something. I went to a powerful ladies of Canada, they will plot um, mm -hmm. luncheon on white collar crime and narcotics. And the commissioner of police was on the head table. And at the question um, section of the thing, I, I stood up and I asked the commissioner, I said, I, I want to ask you two questions. Would you say that either the fraud squad or the anti drug are properly set up? And would you say they are properly funded? And he stood up. And his answer was, in a word, no. Oh and as a commissioner of police, now CNC3 and TV6 covered that, and that never made it in the news. Yeah. That never made it in the news. Yeah. Because when you look at the budget, you see, last time, I, I, even though it is lacking in detail, I'm going through that budget with a fine tooth comb. And what I find is all of the all the organizations of state responsible for enforcement, all the organizations of state responsible for keeping these people honest, those are the, 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 the integrity commission got $12 million. This is not the integrity commission, and I'm remembering, I'm, I'm remembering that figure, because I'm looking at $12 million, and it sounds like a lot of money, but you are running an organization that is responsible for keeping track of every office of state, every office holder, every public office holder, elected, appointed, any politically exposed person drawing public funds. The Integrity Commission has to keep track of them, has to do investigations, keep track of, of, of their submissions, because somebody comes into office and they work $5 million, and they come out of office with $50 million, and somebody, somebody needs to be able to say, how did you do that? But if you do not give the people enough funding to hire the right type of attorneys, I mean, under the People's Partnership, they did four or five lawsuits and it was nearly a billion dollars in legal fees. How could you give the entire entire million dollars? Who, where, what lawyer are they going to hire? What forensic accounting firm are they going to hire to get this information from people who have the benefit of some very corrupt professionals who speak
specialize in hiding money. Well, well clearly for the, the government is poorly structured. There's no checks and no, but the integrity commission should be getting mm -hmm. a significant subvention. Mm -hmm. It should be the integrity in public life. Act should also be amended to give the Integrity Commission search and seizure and arrest power. It is time the public had a watchdog group. We ask mm -hmm. ourselves, who do I call? There's nobody. There's nobody. Yeah. How you, is that possible? That it's set up to fail. That's right. The right. country set That's up right. to fail. Yeah. It's only when you dig deep enough you realize that these things, you call it an office. I have an integrity commission, but it's a one-man show. Yeah. It's not funded. It cannot do the job. I, I had a, a bit of an experience with the integrity commission. And uh, some of the people who knew that they had to provide, because you get the forms, you send you the forms. And that certain people said quite frankly that they should just put it in the garbage bin. And nothing, ever ever happened. Happened. My tax forms. and nothing was ever done, but yet, I used to have to fill out the forms and stuff, and uh, I think there was something that we, we, we were waiting on information for, and uh, we still sent it in because there's a deadline to send it in, and we put a note that, okay, we will send in the balance of the information. And I said, well, you have X, X amount of time to, to submit the information. So they, they tend to go, in my opinion, they were going after the small man, who may be a director or so for the information, but yet the people who were really making the real money, they just were not going after them at all and doing anything because nothing was ever done. And anytime you talk to an individual, oh, I am taking them on because I don't know if it is that in the, the legal part of the document that gives the Integrity Commission the power, there is something lacking. The integrity so they public know. Public. Integrity public they public. know that they could pull out in a dustbin and cannot be touched. That's the integrity in public. Right? They know that. I, asking, it I forgot to remind all of you, all of the viewers, you know the drill. Please share the video as far and as wide as you could. Let them know we're on. Frontline is going to be every Thursday at 8 o'clock and we are going to be dealing with issues in the public space being dealt with right now. This week, Sunday, we had the issue of Minister in the Ministry of the Attorney General, Stuart Young, releasing some information about the HDC and former Housing Minister Ruda Molina for about $100 million that they said they were paid off, that were paid out just before the election last time, the 2015 election. That information was put into the public space, very sensational, but it's, a, it, it's, the, it's effectively a civil lawsuit. It's not prosecution. Mm. So it was just destruction. Yeah. The normal bacchanal just played out differently. You see, Philip, a lot of the people who are on the ground are not going to understand what you just said. So that you have explained it in a way that people can understand. In other words, Stuart Young Minister Tutpa Gai came out and said, we have evidence to show that Rudal Munilal has been engaging in misconduct in public office. So instead of taking him to court where it becomes a criminal offense, you put it in a civil court, which means basically nothing. Nothing's going to happen. So in other words, <laughs> yes, that's it. So in other words, you are making it sound as though you are working on dealing with corruption from the past administration, when in truth and fact, you're using it for a smokescreen. So that's basically, but Stuart Young is of the opinion that he's speaking to unintelligent, uneducated people of Trinidad and Tobago, and that we are not going to be able to figure out what he's trying to do with Stuart Young. You need to come a little better than that because you're dealing with a level of intelligent people that are going to take you apart. 682-2110. If you want to make a contribution to the show, you could call right in. We are getting ready to. Uh, also, <laughs> we want to remind you the director just held up a board. It says Pep and Paran, November 25th, 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. It's at the Shokonia Hotel. You can call 347 4737. She will add that number and this information into the thread that you are viewing this on right now. You can, you can reach out to any of the Progressive Empowerment Party members, including me. Link up for tickets. There are just so many tickets you can get. Well, everybody on, on, this, on this table, 
all the constituency yeah. executives they don't have tickets as well. I want to um, just go back a little bit on this spill in the Shagaramas area. Now, I had many, many moons ago, I had the opportunity of actually going on to one of those major tankers. And uh, based on what I have seen and uh, the, the depth of the oil, I am not convinced that that came from two roads. That spill had to come from a tanker. Now, we have the ability to get satellite footage from the US who could identify point. which tanker point. dumped that oil into Shagaramas. Good point. And quite frankly, I think that's just another red herring to get the people of the real issues that's going on. But guess what? It's going to cost the citizens millions of dollars to clean up. Permission to go ahead. An environmental clearance certificate. That is a brilliant question to ask. Absolutely, answer. absolutely. And when you deal with, with anything that damages the ecology of, of marine life and so on, when you deal with putting down a structure of that magnitude, you're not only taking away, let's say, staff from the hotel present in Tobago, but what exactly are you putting back into Tobago? And why are we not getting any of the information regarding the development of, of, of this Sandals resort in Tobago? You don't know who has a contract to build. They have no approvals in place, but you're considering yourself the great agreement. So, yeah, you can sell, but what is it exactly that you're selling? Because it does not benefit the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Is it a great sale or a great con? Ken? A great con. Because many people in Tobago have no idea of what is coming to Tobago except that Sandals is coming. There's yeah. no That's what we know. has authorized this zero transparency basically the prime minister has taken full control there have been no stakeholder meetings no. in no. the people no. have been told no. nothing no. nothing at all i am telling the people no. we need bullying that's exactly what i said they are trying to intimidate the people yeah, but yeah. 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 
concluding discussions. They don't so, have a memorandum of understanding. They say two twenty one ten. You can add your voice. Yeah, so I don't understand why it is they feel that you know you're telling, giving the information to the people, and you're not, you're just not doing doing that. No, I understand that it was supposed to be seven hundred and fifty rooms. The prime minister in his speech the other day said it was eight hundred. Okay, so we have. Half but, come and need to keep but, rooms. but Ken, yeah. but yes. Ken yes. why? I, I want to ask this question. Why are the people of Tabi sitting back and taking this? Because I think that many people, I mean, if you think about it, 76% of the workforce in Tabi works for the government of the THA, which is again is clear. So many of them are very new to this entire subject matter. And the, the Prime Minister, as, as I was saying before, he came to Tobago took control of this project, bypassed the THA, which says nothing about it. Our new Chief Secretary in Tobago, Charles, mm -hmm. just sat back, did nothing. We have a Minister for Tourism. She's also been bypassed. Mm -hmm. We have a Secretary for Tourism. She has been bypassed. It's totally being handled by the Prime Minister. The next thing to think about this is, even if they broke ground for this, this resort, it will take, I estimate, between three and five years before the doors are actually open. And right now, Tobago's economy, uh, based on the tourism industry, is dead. Mm -hmm. In three to five years, they will have been. Yeah, but that's what they want. They want to shut everybody down. Ham Tobago on a silver platter. I think that that's the deal. Sandals is pretty much just leasing Tobago mm -hmm. from Trinidad. Yeah. And I think that we sent a Tobago union into Parliament to do that. Questions have been raised about how they ended up being able to transact no man's land in the first place. Yeah. Wasn't that part of the whole people empire? They had to, and they had to, to get authority through the courts mm -hmm. to be able to sell off assets, pretty much to sell yeah. assets. Mm -hmm. That's a very sensitive area. If you came there, there's a huge lagoon in the back, mm -hmm. uh, which is a lot of mangrove. It's uh, what you call a spawning area for, for fish, even tarpons. You can find spawning in there, barracudas when they're still babies when they come out down to the ocean, lobsters, every single thing. And the big concern is how is that going to be impacted when they put that 800 room um, yeah. resource there? Now, I would like to encourage the people of Tobago, at least those people that are concerned about saving that wonderful island that is part of our republic, stand up against the government. You need to speak out because this Six, is wrong. Six eight two twenty one ten. But what Ken is saying is a factor. What they have done, the people of Tobago, they baited and switched them mm -hmm. and enslaved them with a salary. Yeah. So they've destroyed the economy. You have no choice. You take this THA and out or staff. Mm -hmm. So if you stand up mm -hmm. against the government, you as a Tobagoian, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. So the only people to rescue Tobago now. Trinidadians, mm -hmm. and we need to use the courts, and we need to use the courts, and we need to sue the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Hello, good evening, your life. Hey, uh, can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, we can, loud and clear. Yeah. 
How does this benefit children and children? supposed to be that Sanders were going to finance this project themselves and all of a sudden that's changed. They're talking about half a billion dollars at a time when our economy is against the ropes. out um Janice Leamon Cricky she's she, she came out tonight bravely she has she has this virus and, and I guess it's getting the better of her so the PRO who was supposed to switch out for Ken is switching out for Janice and this is Tony Defoe PRO of the Progressive good Empowerment Party. Good night Trinidad and Tobago. Six eight two twenty one ten if you would like to wait. So in other words the government of Trinidad and Tobago is now a world bank. We're now in the business of financing businesses that cannot get financing on their own. That do not qualify or cannot qualify for funding through conventional methods. Trinidad and Tobago's government is now financing those entities. When money was no problem and we could have taken stupid chances, I could have understood that then. I cannot understand it now. You cannot finance a project of that size, say half a billion dollars, and think that you're within that bang on the money. 
The PNN is notorious for cost overruns. We have the example of the Scarborough Hospital and the Toruba Stadium. Both of them started for just around $200 million. Both of them finished at just over a billion dollars. So, no, but I want to give them something that they know. They know Scarborough Hospital, they know Toruba Stadium. I mean, we could talk Napa, Sapa, Tapa, all of those cost overruns, everything that they touch. But if we say you're starting at half a million dollars, knowing that you are capable of overrunning, and 10 times the amount, we're talking about we risking here $5 billion. Hello, good evening, Eli. Hello. Hi, good evening, Eli. Uh, hi. Yes? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hi, Kenneth. You need to speak up louder, please. Yeah, um, what are your questions about that platform? One of the things about that is that the amount of things you want to do. So, in my mind, it is going to be very The entire project is as sketchy as what took place on the port. It seems that this Keith Rowley PNN government came to power, came to office with certain plans, and these plans have all revolved around mega projects to benefit a certain small few at the expense of the country, and they're bullying them through regardless. That's right. What took place with Bridgemont Services and the port, that entire fiasco, we've now put to be onions in a position where it is the Cabo Star and the Ocean Flower 2 or nothing. Yes. And I quite uh, think that that was orchestrated to end up in this situation that we're at. you cancel the contract and the boat still come here. Yeah. You cancel the contract and the boat was by Serbia. And the boat came to Trinidad anyway. We were passing by, so we dropped by to say hello. They created this crisis. I firmly believe that, that they created doctrine. this crisis in this order to come in as the savior for Tobago. Of course, that backfired because you're dealing with a contentious But they still pushed it through. Yeah. It's flying. We it's as, listen, again, Kenneth, thanks a lot for your contribution, my friend. Again, 682-2110, you could call in and add your voice. But again, we need to be minded attorneys. There must be lawyers in this country. And you don't have to work for the Progressive Empowerment Party. Work for the country. Let's get some injunctions. Let's get the courts into the process. Let's look at the legality of all of these things that are being done. Where is the Environmental Management Authority? Who is giving them a blanket clearance without understanding what they're doing? Yeah. Where's the country? Why is it that the ordinary citizen must be put through the ringer to get those things done and it cannot be done for those in authority? That cannot be right. We need to govern from the bottom up and everybody must be accountable for everything that they do in this country that affects the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Tony, while you were offset, you heard us talking about white collar crime. I mean, we ended up pinned down on Tobago with sandals. But what are, oh, we have a caller coming in. It's just going to give you a chance to weigh in. Hello, good evening, Eli. Yes, good evening. Yeah. charge of all of the external international PEP chapters and if you could reach out to Ali G because in the United States we have she runs the New York chapter we have Florida being run by Carla Jean Jarpol and Abigail Senegal 
and we may very well need you to do a little more than just make a donation. You might just as well be the catalyst for setting up of the LA uh, branch of the PEP. If you could do that and reach out to Ali G tonight on this chat, I'd appreciate it greatly. And if you could also send me a private message on Facebook so that when the show is finished, I can respond to it and I can make sure that this goes forward. Send it to me as you could, you could send it to me as a private message on Facebook. I know you wanna, I know you wanna come home. I know you wanna come home. All of the chilies outside, back in there, cause you wanna come home. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Please send a message to LG and message me. Thanks a lot for calling. Yeah? 682 When you call in though, as usual, I have to say this, do not listen on the device that you're watching. Listen to me on the phone that you're calling on because there's a delay. Tony Nifu, PRO of the Progressive Empowerment Party. Tony, we're talking white collar crime. Well, my take on it, and I'm talking not just as a PRO, I'm actually talking as a citizen. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I don't even know what to say anymore. I'm, I'm upset because I just feel that, you know, I look at it from the standpoint of our ancestors coming to this country um, forcefully. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to get independence of a country that has all the resources under the sun. And yet the people that we decide to put into, into office to look out for our best interests. And we're talking 55, 55 years here. You know what I mean? That's 11 administrations coming in and out, and there's not one that can say we are bringing betterment to the people, to the generations after the ancestors that came to this land in the condition that they came. We have a land of our own, and we can't bring betterment to 1.3 million people. I mean, be real about there's this. There's not been one government that not you one. can look back and say... There's been not been one government that you can look back and say. No, but not one. It, 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 it's ridiculous. The director wants you closer to me. Oh, I'm sorry, director. <laughs> no, but mean I have to get closer to Susan. I'm not running away from you. I mean, you, you might be a little bit better sometimes, but it's okay. I can deal with that. Listen, if you're living in Chanta Diego right now and you're watching what's going on and you're not better, I don't know. I mean, we can describe our government as a kleptocracy. Yeah. You know, we're ruled by thieves because they don't care anything about the country. Right now, more and more, I'm beginning to believe that. More and more, I'm beginning to they believe don't. that. Unlike other governments in the past that came to govern and thief, mm -hmm. this government came just to steal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. This government is just here to steal. Ken, Tony, Suzette, mm -hmm. there is no justification for the $400 million highway in Manzanella. There is no body in the country that says we needed that. There is nobody, even people in Manzanilla themselves, have any idea why that's happening. You know what's a road to build? The road to Tabin. Exactly. That's the road to build. Take the investment and take the resources we have and create a proper bridge to Tabin. Like you you said. Yeah, listen, listen, at the end of the day, we've, we've had conversations with people and we know for a project of that magnitude, you could bring international consortiums together, build and operate a toll bridge to Tabi. Correct. Because they just built one to in China. Yes. It's going to pay for itself. It's going to pay for itself. Number one. But even so, but even so, even, even you don't go that grand, they've already put us in trouble in Shagaramas. They've built investments in Shagaramas that when people respond to those investments, causes massive traffic through Carnage from Westmore. Yeah. So all the people in Westmore is based on Shorelands, Glencoe, Goodwood Park, Carnage, going right down all of the, I mean, we're talking about tens of thousands of people get inconvenienced because Carnage is a small, mm -hmm. um, it kind of says an urban street, it's a, it's a neighborhood street, and when you have traffic going both ways, one car stop and that's it, hello, good evening, your life. We are only 
My caller, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's a country that spent hundreds of millions of dollars on all sorts of plans. Remember the Mastrovsky report? We spent money inviting people here. We had Bill Bratton, the most sought after commissioner of police in the world. He's put forward proposals to this country. It is not a lack of information, it is a lack of political will. That's right. Thanks a lot for that. Thanks a lot for that. Because, because at the end of the day, white collar crime could end. We could put a robust and transparent tenders process back. Let me tell you something. Eh? All you need it to be is arm's length. Besides the fact that we say, let all constituencies be responsible for their own development and maintenance. So you fund them at budget time. I am using the example of Diego Martin West. If Diego Martin West share of the budget is $225 million, you are supposed to be able to see a document from the Ministry of Finance saying that it approved Diego Martin West for these 52 expenses for the next 12 months. These 52 expenses are either infrastructural development or renovation, maintenance, what have you. But you would be able to see line, out, line item after line item for $250 million plus and this is what kills the corruption. We want to make law that only the people within the constituency could get contracts to do work within the constituency. So you could no longer have no more one-man super contractor getting every contract in the country. Driving money down to the people. That's right. Yeah, got them from the bottom up. Yeah. Give the people spending power. That's what we need. That's, that's a, a major part of the solution in, in fixing our, our financial woes as a population because once you can allow people to have spending power the thing is is that we're so deficient at this point in time we are not going to even be a population of saving money if we were to have more money in our pockets because we have so many things that we need to address if you look at the budget you see in the ministry of health they're giving them 6.5 5.5 billion dollars and 2.5 billion dollars is a line item called transfers that's 2500 million dollars there's a line item that tells you salaries and capital expense. Both of those are under a billion dollars each. What is transfers? I think our budget is actually a roadmap, roadmap to corruption. Yes. I think we need to take that budget apart. I think we need an opposition capable of drilling the Minister of Finance. I want you to tell me in detail. Absolutely. If you're giving public utilities $3.5 billion, I don't understand. How public utilities ministry is getting three point five billion dollars and all it runs is Tientek and Wasa. How could Tientek and Wasa not be at least breaking even? What are you spending three point five billion dollars on in a world where you could actually be you could actually be using renewable energy? Yes. We could start using solar and wind power in this country and cut our reliance on natural gas. So the national gas company magical bill that appeared for this budget. That you say nobody pay, cut it. Cut it. Because if you're not going to give the gas to fr for free to your deck, then flare it. Because nobody else wants it. Nobody else wants it. We're wasting time processing the gas, the cost of the gas right now. Look, today we find out the number one drill ship in the world, the largest drill ship in the world, is being sent to the scrapyard. Imagine the amount of money we're talking about. There are actual oil drilling platforms coming off the assembly line, going straight to the scrapyard. That is the condition of world oil. They know we have oil barges in this country off down the islands that should be earning in this country 100,000 US dollars a day. That not. Somebody stuck a pin in that. And I want to know where was that pin stuck? Because those people pay to lease to, to house those barges there. But I don't think it's making it in the treasury. And it is things like this that when you start to look at, we're talking about $107,000 bandied about as the cost for what the Ministry of Health is paying for there. What's a bad $107,000? What kind of... Oh, we don't want to say what's happening. No, that's $107,000. I mean, I mean... But we have, a, we have a, an opposition that is just this bad... The opposition as, needs to be able to say, Mr. Minister of Finance, I would like you to call the CEO of TNT or PowerGen or whatever it's called now. Bring the CEO of Wasser. Tell us what you did with the $3.5 billion last 12 months and what is he planned to do with this $3.5 billion? And we want to see supporting documentation. More documentation. The Auditor General, the Auditor General is the next one who is underfunded. The Auditor General should have 
the, the powers of a chancellor of the exchequer of like the United Kingdom, that I will check each invoice that you present for payment. Yes. Because the permanent secretaries are getting, their names are being called in some very sketchy behavior. So even that as a check mark not working. No, we, need, we need yeah. arms length. We need, if the Ministry of Works or the Ministry of National Security says it needs a hundred fire trucks, you need to be able to send that request to a tenders board and they interview people who provide fire trucks locally, regionally, and internationally. Nice Based on your specifications, they would, uh, they would arrive at a short list and invite back the Ministry of National Security to send technocrats, not your minister, negotiating through an offshore holding company in Hong Kong. I mean, this is madness. This country, you're correct, it's run like a kleptocracy. That's the dimension of fire trucks. I saw a fire truck responding to a fire in Tobago about a year and a half ago. And it plugged into the hydrant and water steam out of all the hoses. You know, okay, so they this have is a old This is a nation <laughs> that spent six and a half million dollars to, to pull a fire truck. We were told Badness. that the fire truck ran off the North Coast down a hundred foot deep. And it cost 6.5 million because you needed to bring in this this massive contractor mm -hmm. and all of this equipment. Mm -hmm. Somebody sent me a video, said Philip Delay. This was when Jack Warner was the minister. Yes, he said Philip Delay, and I released this video into the public space, that the, the fire truck ran off the road into a ditch 30 feet off the road, and that they pull it out with an excavator. No set of cranes and all the back of that. And then the person responsible for the company in response to us putting out a video saying we don't know what was going on and they sent a detailed list of three days of work to move this fire truck and all kind of mats and all kind of stuff that they needed. They actually sent their, their catering and all of the lunches for all of the staff and I got another video that one, one vehicle pulled the fire truck onto the road and the other vehicle pushed it up onto a truck and the truck tried to drove away. And they build the government, and six, build the government six, six and a million. half million dollars. Yeah. And that information is in the public space and neither the Commissioner of Police or the Director of Public Prosecution, the Integrity Commission, nobody could deal with that. That means somebody gets six and a half million dollars and in response, they fire the Chief Fire Officer. This country is badly broken, it is badly managed. We have what we're making jokes and saying things like a kleptocracy. Let me tell you what we have. We have a band of power brokers masquerading as office holders, hiding behind two political parties. The PNM and the UNC, I've seen documents today. Somebody sent me a document of a new finance company formed with two current PNM government ministers, an ex-UNC senator, and two party lawyers. Any, any pretense, any pretense that those are different organizations, forget that shit. The PLM and the UNC and all of the bacchanal that you hear in the public space, all the heat thief and she thief, if it was of any value, somebody would have been brought to justice by right now. And I think it's time that people wake up to the reality of Timothy and really fight back. Just as we are trying to, to awaken people in today, I mean in Trinidad and Tobago to become aware of, of a government that does not really care about the people. Look at the flooding we had today. Oh, so let's you not know. go there. <laughs> We, we, we're talking about white color crime. Yes. Yeah. Just listen. That nothing today was horrendous. Nothing functions. Horrendous. Yeah. And and I mean, what is it? The first time we had had rain today exactly. or yesterday? Exactly. You know what I mean? This is something that is a part of our culture, a part of our country. We know what our weather is like year round, each year in and out. No rain is magic. And and to this day, we still can't work a proper plan, a a, a, a proper infrastructure, a proper draining system. I mean, I've heard Philip talk about the retention ponds and, and all these different things because at the end of the day, it's fresh water. This is what we need to consume. And there's many, many things that we can use with this water. But then there's a big portion of time within the year, a big segment of the population is not receiving water. Somebody said to me, water all around me, not in my bike. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Madness. Water all around me, not in my bike. That's probably what even be using for the water cannons. You know what I mean? That is another insult to this country. And I want to tell Trinidad Tobago something. Eh? It is high time we fixed the way public office holders are allowed to hold office in this country. Correct. The Representation of the People Act needs to be amended. Our constitution needs to be amended to include recall legislation, which is a fancy way to say you're fired. Ah. 
you said that you can do the job. We've hired you based on certain information. We agreed that this is your job description. This is what you're going to be paid for it. You're not doing it. You're fired. The people who elect a member of parliament from their constituency, this is not about crap going about these, they die and fall in a yellow jersey. This is about you and your constituents, your fellow constituents, sending somebody to the parliament to seek your interest. I asked today on the radio station, when was the last time you heard a representative of the people speak about the constituency they found in the parliament? Sure. When was the last time, and I remember, but one, when he was fired from the government and isolated in the parliament, he would stand up and drone on and on and on about problems in St. Joseph that he never mentioned when he had government power. The parliament, the house of representatives, the system of government, opposition government, it is all broken. We've settled for theater. This is not how this country should be. For themselves, citizens, or patriots of TNT. I mean, you have, you know, I know we're dealing with white color, right? But everything in terms of management is so dynamic because it links every facet together. You have families that have been stranded because of one day of rain. People who could not get to their homes last night in under four hours because they were stranded on a highway. I was one of those people. You have children that could not go to school today, lost a day in their educational life. Your parents that couldn't make it out to work today, lost a day pay. In an already economic challenging time. Challenging time. We have people facing loss of income and children yes, being denied. Yes. What about you have got an kind of emergency? Another issue. And you are spending $400 million on a highway that will bring only coconut water to the north of Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And you are not concerned that that money could be used to, to, to put proper infrastructure in place to deal with flooding one community at a time? No, but when you have... Because I'm on a panel. When you have high-class donkeys like Terry Rondo, chairman of the Sangri Valley Regional Corporation, say that all of that flooding is because of the people that are putting garbage in the waterways or squatters building out onto the waterways. Mr. Rondon, miss me with that. You are the chairman of the Sangri Grandi Regional Corporation. You have the authority of that office. If somebody has built out onto the waterways, where is your backhoe? Where is your bulldozer to clear the space? You are, you, you are liable now for that entire flood by admitting that you knew the problem before the flood happened. Yes. You can't be looking at the most minute. That makes up for about 27% of the cause of flooding. Poor infrastructure. And that happens from the, from the level of government because you're giving your friends and your financiers the contracts to do drains and roadways and, and put infrastructure in place that determines the quality of work we may have being done in our communities. And when that infrastructure fails, you blame something that the public have no statistics to measure. But all of them, Suzette, and I say this again, Fuad Khan stood up last time there was a flood and spoke about the public and the trash. I was in group or or, or push west i was in the constituency while i was reading that on my social media device watching a bamboo patch in a concrete river 15 feet higher than the road so i was wondering when was the last time somebody maintained that river yeah and we call them rivers but they concrete drains our entire water policy is collect the rainwater and dump it in the sea which by itself is nonsense but stick up in there for a minute the truth of the matter is, you talk infrastructure. Where's the infrastructure development plan? Yeah. You know? Does anybody know where to where to access that document? Because all of this water and all of this flooding, the irony is, three months from now, we could be in drought. Three months from now, Basta can be telling you, don't wash your car, don't water your plants. We have no water. Extreme plants. management. Extreme mismanagement, I should say. We're either a very wet country or a very hot, dry country. We cannot strike a balance because we have incompetence in water, public utility. Water, the management of water is magic to us. People tell me I have a brother-in-law and I use him as an example all the time because where he lives in Pity Valley, 
he, his house, his yard, is below the highway. The highway level is the top of the drain, the river, the Dago Martin River. So if it overflows from the river, it's going to overflow into his yard. So he keeps track of the tides. Because this is a country now, and, 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 and people say all the time that when it flood, we expect the water to go, it's high tide. I say, but New Orleans and Holland are below sea level permanently. Yeah. How come they don't flood? It took, it took a massive hurricane to damage the levees to flood New Orleans. Remember that? I can't try to remember the name of that hurricane, but that is what it took. Katrina. Katrina, yeah, Katrina. Katrina had to yeah. damage the, the levees, but that, that stood strong for hundreds of years. We have no water management policy. I, I grew up in Woodbrook. Wrights Road was the sea. The foreshore freeway that we drive now to go through West, all of that was that was sand and sea. Peaks where Peaks gas station is was a tiny little gas station and the wall and a wall sea wall right on the highway that water used to crash against. And and they've built out where movie town is and all those other things that happened there. They built all of those things and I don't think that they accounted for the movement of all the water that comes down from the hills that we dump into the sea. No. So we have no plans, we're correct. We have no we do not have proper infrastructure. We cannot handle normal rainfall. So above average rainfall destroys houses. How could that be the way the third wealthiest country in the Western Hemisphere is operating? The government seems to not be able to handle anything. They, they do what we what I would call damage control. Tell you around then, fire yourself. For knowing that it was garbage, fire yourself. For knowing that the waterways were blocked, fire yourself. Everybody in San Grande, the Gasparillo, anybody that suffered any part of that flooding right now, please, tomorrow, head down to the office of the San Grande Regional um, Corporation and tell Terry Rondon to fire himself for gross incompetence, negligence, dereliction of duty. Suzette. I have always said, and I, I will continue to say, we need to focus on sustainable management and, of course, development. We have to start looking at ways in which to reduce incompetence in, 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 from a governmental structure, encourage and motivate the people to become part of the plan to develop this country and to develop resources that we can use in this country to reduce our dependence on, on foreign exchange, and food security. If we have this insane amount of flooding, how can we even dream of becoming an independent food producing Absolutely. country. Because it destroyed a lot of crops. I mean, the magnitude of losses you will face as an investor into food security. Look at this. Would be phenomenal. For a card and all of the MPs and former ministers who've had opportunities in government that talk about the people throwing garbage in the river. The Progressive Empowerment Party, we advocate for a 25 cent tax on this bottle, all plastics at manufacture or import stage. That 25 cent tax would be paid to anybody who picks up this empty bottle and brings it into a collection agency. Yeah. So you check this out. You have people in this country unemployable. I'm talking about from the homeless, what we call the vagrants. These people, you give them the chance to get 25 cents a bottle, they will pick this country clean. Why we don't have a recycling tax that encourages that? Common sense. Why, why the average homeowner can't get their children to fill a bag of plastic bottles and go and get their redemption money for the, the children and put it in their piggy bank. Exactly. So it don't just have to be the homeless, but I'm saying it is a win-win. Because if you encourage people to dispose of these things sensibly, and we also have a plan, because there is German technology that we've been researching that reduces this to pellets that when combined with road surfacing material reduces the noise. But, you know, recycling is first what became, I think, popular in the 80s, right? Early 80s, and it swept across Europe and Germany. It came to uh, in the late 80s. And here we are, 2017, and we still can't decide to put recycling into it. Recycling into or remanufacturing is an invisible industry. Yeah. That is a $70 billion oh. industry in the United States. You don't of know how to well, there's this one uh, individual I recently met who um, he's trying to create an environment where they're able to, to, to get uh, recyclable plastic uh, 
because they I'm not even going to talk about it because I, I I'm not sure how they pack patterns and, and, and copyrights and all that other good stuff uh, um, is, is actually concerned where he's concerned. I'm not really supposed to talk about it in the public domain, but what I would say is that there are people on the ground right now that are doing proper research, as in how could we reuse these plastic bottles? And um, there has been a, a recent model uh, developed locally here, you know, in Trinidad. Um, this man needs funding to make this thing happen. Has your project government? Again, yes. There are people that I know Waste. that have that brought those issues up. Awesome. But reduce, reuse, repurpose, recycle, all of those things. You know, in Sweden, they just opened a mall. Only sell recycled items. An entire mall. But in Sweden, is my model of a first world country. Sweden knows how to play this game. What we do, we just, in, we just invested billions of dollars to create a water, I don't know, redevelopment facility in the meantime, side by side with the, what is the city down? The country's down, in the Labas. Somebody asked me, because we have a plan to repurpose that and use it for a duty-free commercial zone. And they said, you have to be careful because it is next to the sensitive mangroves from. I said, we're dumping car batteries there now. We're dumping. Imagine that. We're dumping Lead. heavy metal. Imagine that. Toxic waste. Toxic waste. Yeah. We're dumping it there now. Nobody checks what's in those garbage Isn't that area eco park? Isn't that like protected by the environment? Uh, uh, Listen, the, 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 uh, what, what is done to the people in the beef and that whole idea. When you drive to or from Western China, when you drive past that, when you, once you reach that lighthouse going either east or west, you've passed through. The, ex the best example of the abuse and failure of government that we've had for 55 years. Yes. Because the people of Nova, Meetham, Labatel, and Silots, I mean Silots, mm -hmm. Silots, the people of Silots, if they had a lawyer, could sue this country for, for they abuse. Should. They should be able to, because that is unfair. We've, we've never respected that every single citizen of this country is a stakeholder and a shareholder. Yes. And until we get to that point, and until somebody proves that point, we will not have to burn tires anymore to get our rightful share. The average person of this country is left fearful, depressed. We have ridiculously high rates of mental illness from depression and anxiety. We have mad suicide numbers that nobody is tracking. And what's going on in the beatdown? Somebody needs to have some kind of heart and compassion. I, I cannot understand how a government that says it represents a specific ethnic part composition of the country could treat them so badly. If you look at if you look at the, the, the dump, the dump or any other dump in Trinidad, it is such a hazard to life, any type of life, you know, maybe three square miles in, in, in circumference. The indiscriminate dumping of toxic waste not only threatens life surrounding it but also underground water systems that would be transferred to people who are not even part of that environment there is no study done on the dump in Bitham to determine how this has affected the people that live there whether or not what is contributing to, to the atmosphere is actually toxic to someone's mental health there's no study that was done to determine that in this country but we have information of worldwide information that should tell you the, the, the habit of collecting um, used cable and burning it, just that. Yeah. And, in, and inhaling those fumes. Mm -hmm. Or well, every time that, that we dump is set on fire. Yes. No, the reason why I'm saying this is it is really to support the, the statement that you just made that the people could take the government to court yes, sure. for endangerment, basically, because your life is at risk when you have improper, indiscriminate dumping and, uh, of toxic waste in an environment that's pretty close to you. But in Tobago, there's a dump. In Studley Park, and it's high in elevation. And what we have discovered is the leaching from all that toxic waste coming into, into the, the bed. Yeah. Into the bed. But, 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 but it's going into the groundwater. Yeah. That's it. And, and, yeah. and they're not understanding because we live in, we, we've had governments that only govern for now. 
Nobody has a vision or a, a long-term plan for Trinidad. A mission and vision statement for the country of Trinidad and Tobago. So why don't we have that? So it, it's why when a government changes, they could scrap all of the plans and yeah. policies of the last government. And that needs to change. And forget all of the money that was just spent on that and all of the work that was done there. Forget that we're going in this direction now. And there's no continuity. The people, it, it, this this idea that the winner goes, we spoils, we fire everybody, you get to hire new people. It's madness. Exactly. This is this is not how you run a country. Anyway, this has been Frontline, a Thursday night, every Thursday at 8 o'clock. Um, and it will continue from next week, Thursday at 8 o'clock. You will see Janice, Tony, and Ken. We're also launching a show that we aim to launch next week, Wednesday. Suzette and I will be co-hosting called Counterpoint. You'll get more information on that. Tony, in closing, anything you'd like to add? Well, the only thing I would like to say uh, to the population of Trinidad and Tobago is, uh, again, you know, this is we're not all in, into this for personality. It's about actually changing the country that we live in for the generations to come. But we must have a starting point, and that point has to start now. And it does not start just with us. It starts with you. Because we can't do any of these initiatives. We can't make this change without the support of the population. And we're talking 1.3 million of you. Um, you know, look, I, I voted PNM at, at one point. I voted UNC at one point. This is the evolution of time right now. And I feel to myself that the proposals that the PEP is putting on the table, you can dissect it. You can actually see the models that work. It's been tweaked for our demographic, for our country, for our people. And my point is, is that this is something that can actually work. Come down to the uh, uh, head office at, at 19 Stanmore Avenue um, every Saturday, 12 noon. Uh, have your voice in it if you want to hear about some of these policies and, and have us dissect it right there in front of you where you can scrutinize it. That's the forum where you can do this. Listen, the point of the matter, people, 55 years has gone. Me, I, Anthony Difu, as a citizen, I choose not to sit down anymore and, and see Trinidad be the way that it is. I've made a choice. I uh, have gravitated towards Mr. Alexander and uh, the vision that he has, the, the proposals in, in bringing true change, as well as the entire executive, which, again, these are regular people that's bringing common sense ideas that actually works. Uh, it's just a matter of being able to be in a position to implement these ideas, to, to, to make this thing come to pass, because at the end of the day, look, it's gray hair on my face. They, my, my grandmother used to tell me this is mother's milk. You know what I mean? Once a man, twice a child. My point is, is that we're only here for a time and is what we do in making true change and leaving a proper legacy for the generations to come. Uh, we're fortunate to have Trinidad and Tobago now as our own soil um, from our, our ancestors that, that arrived here in the condition that they did. It's up to us to make the true change in, in bringing better men for all, not just a, 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 a group of people. We're talking about the entire population of Trinidad and Tobago because no matter what race you are, what uh, religion you are, we all are Trinidadian and Tobago. Right? And that's the bottom line. But that's my two cents towards the mix of things. I look forward to uh, uh, in hosting this panel next Thursday along with a uh, 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 couple of meetings. Correct. Um, <laughs> uh, we're going to also have some guests uh, within an hour and next week. Before next week, we're going to uh, introduce exactly who we're going to have on the panel uh, for that show. And uh, again, just uh, be in the know, be in the know, uh, you know, spread the word, PP is in town, Progressive Empowerment Party. Remember it. Somebody just said that Tony's two cents is two US cents. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. Because he, he sat over here quiet in the whole show. So maybe I should have started him off with Tony in closing. <laughs> so we'll do it next time. Okay? Yeah, I, your two cents is no color for the US. Mine is I want to say that, that uh, for the viewers out there who are looking at us on the panel here, we are people who are concerned about this country. We are genuinely concerned in, in such a way that we want to see betterment for this country. We want to enlighten you. That's why we come every single night as Mr. Philip speaks, and he tries to bring information to the public to make you become aware of what this country is and where we need to go. We need to make this a better place that so we all can enjoy, you know, having uh, peaceful nights, feeling safe to go about and raise our families and have a future, a bright future. Thank you. Susan. I am urging every parent to think about your children. 
think about their safety, their access to education, their access to good first world infrastructure. Look at your kids sitting next to you or in their beds and think about their future. Because the people who are sitting in government and the people who have just left, they don't care about your children. And you should be able to make that decision and say, this is my child and I am going to vote for a country, for a government that is going to make this country a place that my child can be safe and that my child can have a future in. So if you're not thinking about yourself, please think about your children because their future is not guaranteed or safe with the current administration that we have. The Progressive Empowerment Party are no recycled politicians. They are brilliant citizens of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Come and hear what we advocate. We do it publicly. We tell the existing government, you know what? Make us irrelevant. Steal our ideas. Put them into practice now. We want a better country. Either we do it or you do it. It doesn't matter to us. Not one of us in this running down office. Not one of us in this looking for a job. At the end of the day, if you can do it, we'll tell you take it and run. Make home ownership for all a reality. End the white collar criminality and the corruption in the government. Bring recall legislation and amend the constitution so that the people can fire non-functional government. We want home ownership, affordable food, healthcare that works, education that delivers. We want national security. We want a place where every creed and race can find an equal place. We want one people under one flag. We want all of those high sounding platitudes and more. And as Ken said, Toby said, Suzette said, and on behalf of Janice Leamond Creaky, <laughs> who will be back here with you on Thursday coming. Thank you very much for joining us on Frontline. Ken, I, I would have hoped Ken would have touched on Pep Media because we've launched Pep Media. Frontline is one of the first shows that is produced by Pep Media. We're launching Counterpoint hopefully next week. That will be the second show. We're also bringing a show called On the Ground, which will give you information at all levels of Trinidad society. And it's high time we all started to get to know each other again. If you have not yet joined the party or if you're interested in getting more information, you can send us an email to peptrinlego at gmail.com. We have an app, the Pep app, PEP, APP available on all app stores, free to download. We have a website, PEPTT.com, and now we have Pep Media. So we're coming at you all sides and bring you all the information that you need. Our manifesto, Reboot the Republic, is under construction, but it will contain a lot of this information and more. To all of my co-hosts tonight, thank you very, very much. To all of you who are watching us, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Good night.